Okay, so today I'm going to talk to you about two classic horror novels, The Woman in Black and The Haunting of Hill House. I loved both of these. I really, really enjoyed this and I adored this. I'm gonna keep this spoiler free for this review, even though they're both classics, just because I really want you to read them. So I'm gonna try to pitch them to you. I'm gonna tell you a little bit about them and then urge you to go read them. Starting with The Woman in Black. As I'm editing this, I'm realizing that I was unnecessarily overly vague in how I set up this book. So I'm just gonna give a little bit more description really quick. Uh, so our protagonist is going to another town to handle the estate of a woman who's recently died. And when he mentions the house that he's going to, everybody seems weird. Nobody really wants to talk about the house. Everybody kind of acts funny around it. But then our protagonist goes to the funeral of the person whose estate he's handling and a woman dressed all in black appears and it's clear that she's not quite right. But when he asks around about it, everybody denies that she was there. He's, the, he's seemingly the only one that can see this woman in black. Uh, but then it gets even more creepy when he goes to the estate to handle things. Um, some strange things are happening. All the papers are very um, disorderly. And he continues to see this woman in black. She just keeps appearing. Uh, he asks a lot of questions and like I said, nobody really wants to talk about what's going on here, but he finally finds someone who will explain it to him. And apparently this woman in black is the sister of the estate. And every time she appears, a child dies. So that's all I'll say about the setup, but I really liked it. This is written in a very gothic style, which is my favorite. Like I love gothic horror stories so much. The setting is in a small, creepy town where everybody has secrets that they're keeping from our protagonist, which is one of my favorite elements to creepy stories. I love the small town setting where there's things happening underneath that nobody really wants to talk about. And very disturbing things are happening around him. He starts seeing things and hearing things. I mean, it's it's a classic ghost story, you know. And this is, I will say this, this is a very straightforward classic haunting, a very straightforward classic haunted house man being haunted. And it was wonderful. I think that if you like that sort of thing, which this is exactly what I want out of horror. This this very spooky, uncomfortable, unnerving, nothing feels comfortable, nothing feels quite right. This very slow, maddening uh, sort of feeling from your protagonist of, I need to understand what's happening, but at the same time while it's happening, terrifying things are happening around him. It's just, it's, it's exactly, what I love. When it comes to horror stories, the ones that I always gravitate to gravitate towards are ghost stories, haunted houses, small eerie towns that aren't telling you everything. These are all the elements that I live and breathe for. And it's set in a, it's written in a very gothic style. It's not long. It's just, I really enjoyed it. Now, I'll hype you even harder for The Haunting of Hill House because I I loved this book so hard. It was, it made me sad when it was over. So this book, um, I know there's a Netflix series. I haven't watched it. I've heard that it's pretty different. So this book is, uh, there's this doctor that's trying to, um, trying to further his studies, trying to understand some things. So he invites a few people to the Hill House, which is a house where a lot of supernatural, strange things are happening. So he selects certain people and he selects them for a reason to invite them to come and stay at the Hill House. Some of them agree and some of them don't. One of the people that agrees is our protagonist, Eleanor, or Nellie, she's called oftentimes in this book. She has a very shy, introverted, innocent sort of personality and she comes into this house um, and very quickly it's clear that there's, that everything is off about this house. So things like the walls seem too tall 
or the shadows stretch too long, or um, we're looking for someone, or, or we hear someone calling for us, so we open the door so that they can easily find us, but then the door swings itself shut so that they'll get lost. Uh, I'm absolutely positive. I know what room is behind this door. I open it, know it's a room I haven't been in before. There are too many exits in, in, in the kitchen. You know, why, why does the cook need this many ways out? Like, there's just a lot of very simple things like if a door swings shut while you're home alone are you scared i actually asked that question to my husband when i was describing this book to him and he was like yes of course i'm scared when that happens what are you talking about but i don't know i'm a very logical like logic based not so much emotion based person which isn't always great but to me when these things happen when i look in a room and i'm like huh the dimensions seem off somehow or it seems like there's too many exits to a room or a door swings closed and there's no explanation. To me, I'm just like, okay, there was a gust of wind, like whatever, you know, there's a breeze. Maybe, I don't know, the hinges aren't straight. What do I care? But it's all these little things that are written in this extremely eerie, unsettling way. The prose, oh my goodness, Shirley Jackson's prose. The way she describes these very simple things that have very simple explanations, the way she describes them feel extremely uncomfortable and 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 her prose mixed with these everyday ordinary unsettled uh, things that make you unsettled those things together create the environment for the most naturally spooky beginning where it's a very slow build of just unsettling vibes and then it escalates and escalates and escalates and escalates until we're getting to proper horror, like haunting stuff. And I love it. So the house is this, is this entity that is messing with people, that is doing things to these people. The house is trying to separate, in Shirley Jackson's, in Haunting of Hill House, the house is trying to separate the people so that it can haunt them in specific ways. And oh my goodness, it's so good. It's so good. And that's the thing that I really wanna talk about in this review, is that I've come to find that I think for me, I tend to prefer classic horror over modern horror. That's not exclusive true there have been several modern horror books that I've really enjoyed but I find as far as as me consistently loving classic horror is it for me and I think the reason is because a lot of modern horror does a lot of like jump scare sort of things which you can totally do in books too it does a lot of um, gore or shock factor things a lot of very in your face kind of horror like someone chasing you through a room kind of horror um, and that's not exclusively true. I'm generalizing a lot, but that's what a lot of mo a modern horror does, at least that I've read. I can't pretend that this is, you know, I'm extremely well read in the genre, but I've read enough that this is something that I see a lot. Whereas in classic horror, it's this very slow, unsettling build. The prose is just as important as the things that are happening on page. The way the author is telling the story is a huge factor in how how the story is com coming across. That's obviously it is. But the way the author is telling the story, the verbiage that they're using it is just as important as anything else because it, it gets under our skin. Instead of this really extreme kind of fear, it's something that, that feels very real, very day to day, and then escalates into something supernatural. You know what I mean? And this very eerie, unsettling, slow build that turns into something catastrophic is my jam. And with, with The Haunting of Hill House, with this book, it's a lot of how the house is affecting Eleanor and how, how it's changing her mind about things, how it's making her think, the things that it's convincing her of, but then she convinces herself back out of. That's another really common theme with classic horror is that it's people seeing things and feeling things and being convinced of things and then convincing themselves back out and trying to find logical explanations for the supernatural things that are happening. But there are no logical explanations because ghosts. And I just love it so much. With both of these books, I felt very unsettled and uncomfortable, and it felt like, like I could, I could walk into a spooky, creepy house, and this kind of stuff would happen. It wouldn't, but 
it's just fun. I don't know. These are both well-known, well-loved classics, so you've probably already read them, but if you haven't, please do, because I loved them so much. If you like that slow, unsettling, uncomfortable build that escalates into ghost stories, you know, like proper hauntings, if you dig that, if you like a sentient haunted house with spooky, creepy, creepy things happening, characters that are being driven mad by the things that are going on, desperately trying to find answers, but the answers are crazy. If you like that sort of thing, these both did it. Plus, this one had so much comedic relief in it. There's a specific character that joins us a little ways in, and she is so much fun to read about because I, I won't, I won't talk about it. It's a short book, and she comes in later on, but there's so much comedic relief that happens within this story as well. At first, it's just the spooky vibes, but when things start escalating, another character enters to add some relief to that as well. It's just brilliantly done. It's just really well done. This is a bit of a chaotic review because I'm kind of going back and forth in how I'm talking about these, but this is my, this is what I love to read. This is what I love to read when I'm looking for something that's creepy and spooky and odd and uncomfortable. This is the kind of stuff that I want. And I'm so pleased that I read both of these. Both of these will be books that I reread. I'm probably going to come right back to these next October because I just enjoyed it so much. If you've read these, I would love to discuss it with you. If you haven't, I hope you will. Be sure to chat with me more about both of these books down in the comments. I post videos every Tuesday through Friday. I'll see you again soon. Bye.